All right, so number nine. So first of all, a popular way for people to draw this is we know that on this side of zero, the function is increasing and has a slope of one, two, three, four. So I have a, a function that is increasing with a slope of four on to the left of zero. So I have something that goes like that. And uh, we have this undefined point in the derivative, so maybe there's an undefined point in the function. All right, and then I have this uh, section over here where the slope is negative two and uh, when uh, x is greater than zero. So maybe we'll just make a thing here and make the slope be negative two like that and two. All right, now, so the first thing for me to say is, this is in fact a possible way to draw it. There are many possible ways to draw it. The simplest way to draw something like this, and, and so this is an important idea to understand. Just because f prime is undefined and f prime of zero is undefined, that doesn't mean that f of zero is undefined. Just because f prime has a jump discontinuity, that does not mean that f has a, a jump discontinuity. f could, in fact, look like this. Let's try to get a slope for t, you know, one and four, all right? It could look like this and, and actually have a point here and then, so that's slope positive four, right? Positive four. And then on the other side, we have slope negative two, but we'll, we'll actually connect them. So this function could in fact be continuous. It could be continuous. The function f could be continuous, and yet f prime could, might not be continuous. So there are lots of different ways you could draw this. So for example, you could draw, you know, basically the left and right side are disjointed. So you could do anything with a slope negative four on the right, on the left, negative slope negative four on the left, and anything with a slope uh, negative four on the right, it could be, you know, it could be lower, slope negative two on the, on the right, right? It could be lower. And, and as far as what f of zero is, we don't know. These could both be open, or one could be open, one could be full. We don't know, right? So, but the simplest way to draw this is like this, right? Or any variant of that where um, we, we actually have f be a continuous function. It could be, so why not, you know? But that, just so you know that that's one possibility. In fact, it's going to be an important possibility, and we're going to talk a lot next week about what it means that um, f prime is not continuous, and in particular that f prime is not defined. No matter, notice that no matter how you draw it, your f, your function f has to either have a sharp corner or a jump discontinuity. That's in fact two of the ways that f prime could fail to exist if you sneak a peek at 3.2. Section 3.2 is all about how f prime could fail to exist. One possibility is a sharp corner like that. The other possibility is f is not continuous, all right? And there's a third possibility, which we'll talk about that stuff when we get to it, okay? All right, um, I also wanna do this one, number 12. Because here's what's different about number 12. So number 12 has this point where f prime is zero, but does not change sign. So that's not a max or a min. So if again, I say start with the maxes and mins, and we're looking at number 12, right? So here's a point at x equals negative three where f prime changes from negative to positive. Therefore, f has a min. So let's put a min um, at x equals negative three. All right, what's happening at x equals three? So because f prime is zero, that means the slope of the tangent is zero. And that means that f has a horizontal tangent, which we actually have here on the calculus chart. If f prime is zero, f has a horizontal tangent. All right, so what we'll do is at x equals three, we'll just sketch a horizontal tangent. All right, but look what else has to happen. f is increasing as it comes up to x equals three, and then stops increasing at x equals three, but then continues to increase again. What does that look like? It goes like this. So we're gonna come up and stop increasing for a minute, for an instant, and then we're gonna continue increasing again. Meanwhile, there is a horizontal tangent in here. Again, remembering we don't know what the y coordinates of any of these things are, we just know the x coordinates. And then uh, f prime continues 
uh, negative to the left of negative 3, so that means the f continues decreasing, so that means f is going to come down like this. So here's one where it might help to look at concavity. So if you look at um, what's happening at x equals 3, right? So f prime is decreasing on 0 to 3. So we see that f is concave down because f prime is decreasing. So what happens at x equals 3 is f prime is 0, so f has a horizontal con uh, tangent, but then also f prime starts increasing. And since f prime is increasing, that means f must turn to concave up. So concave down, concave up. Since f has changed from concave down to concave up at this point, what we call it is an inflection point, or a point of inflection. But by the way, an inflection point does not have to have a horizontal tangent. In fact, we've already seen some graphs, such as this one. All right, this graph has an inflection point where the concavity changes from concave down to concave up, but does not have a horizontal tangent. So an inflection point can look like this, and it's really not clear where it is on the graph. Or an inflection point can look like this, where there's a horizontal tangent, and it's very clear where it is on the graph. So an inflection point is where the uh, concavity of the graph changes up to down or down to up, and that's what this graph looks like. All right, let's see. Did I want to go through any more of these? Um, yeah, I guess I wanted to go through number 12. So number 12, so one thing, so now we don't have any maxes or mins, so where am I going to start? Well, I can see a point where f prime is 0, so I know f prime has to be, f has to have a horizontal tangent there. And then the only thing I know apart from that is that f is always increasing. And I can also see that since f prime is decreasing here, f must be concave down. And then over here, f prime is increasing, so f must be concave up. And we have a horizontal tangent there. So that's what that looks like. Now, once again, by the way, you can see that f prime is quadratic, a parabola, and f is cubic. So that's your classic x cubed graph right there with um, some horizontal and vertical translations. All right, so there's lots of examples of sketching a possible graph of f of f, remembering there are many possible graphs, you only have to graph one. Um, from the graph of f prime, I've left a number of them for you to do. All the ones that I haven't done yet are for you to do, and that is part of your homework. So let's see if I can uh, summarize what the homework for uh, today is. Um, let's see, so we had page 137, number 19 through 22 all. We had that from the movement lab, and then we have the graphing lab. You have to turn that in, that's because, uh, remember in the graphing lab, let's see, find this a little bit right here. Let's see. Hang on, I got you covered. I got so many papers out right now. Where's the graphing lab, though? it would be a nice thing to pop on here right now. Okay, on the graphing lab, we did number one together, but you still got to do number two. So that's what I mean by graphing lab, all right? And then uh, the third thing is uh, graphing practice. My color's consistent here, I need a black. Graphing practice. And that's this guy that we just were going over, and that is posted on the Google Classroom. Um, both of these two guys are posted on Google Classroom. They're also on the handouts page of the website. That is your homework, and that is it for today. Have a good weekend.